Does somebody say go? Go. Okay, great. Um, <clears throat> okay, so this is number two. Um, I was going to try and slow down, but then I noticed there was this on the desk, <laughs> which says to the people far and back, says go fast. So I don't know if that was for me, but <laughs> I'll take it. Um, <clears throat> okay, so, um, so yesterday we saw that if you look at the Chern-Simons function on uh, a principal bundle on a three manifold, then its critical points are flat connections. And in doing some computations, we saw that, that there was something interesting going on. We just uh, looked at flat connections on some special three manifold cipher fiber spaces. Then the count saw something interesting about uh, four manifolds that they bound. Um, we also saw that if we looked at certain representation <coughs> spaces of knots, that uh, the homology of those representation spaces um, was looked like the Havana homology of the knots. And so we we want to figure out a story um, that makes some uh, nice meaty story that those things fit into. So. The idea, Floor's fantastic idea, was to, to try and do Morse homology for things like the churn simons functional. And I, I just wanted to quickly throw up a few things from finite dimensional Morse theory, which we'll see uh, in the, what, how they play out in the, in the infinite dimensional setting a bit. But you know, here's everybody's favorite Morse function, the height function on the torus. We look at gradient flow for some choice of Ramanian metric. Look at the energy of a path. Here it is. Maybe you want to put a half in there, maybe not. I didn't today. Uh, a crucial thing is that, n never mind if it's a flow line, the difference in the, uh, <coughs> if you take a path somewhere in here, then you can compute the difference by looking at the energy plus an extra term, um, which vanishes, sorry, wrong term. Um, vanishes if, uh, if the, this is a solution to the gradient flow equation. Uh, so if you have a solution to the gradient flow equation, the energy is controlled by the, uh, by the change in the, in the va value of the function. And a, a key player in the story of, uh, of Morse theory and some tellings of it is understanding the, the space of flow lines. So uh, this MAB is the, um, is the set of gamma from R to M that solve the gradient flow equation, downward gradient flow equation, and they limit uh, as t goes to plus, plus and minus infinity, uh, gamma of t is A or B. Right? That's, so this plays a fundamental role, and in fact, um, it's uh, quotient by translation plays a plays a bigger role. <coughs> the way it plays a, the way it, it's used, um, what's important what, important property of it is understanding compactifica uh, compactification of it. It's called the broken flow line compactification. I look at this space of trajectories, mod translation, and then <coughs> um, it turns out that the only way that a sequence of trajectories mod translation can fail to converge is if it converges to a, a, a broken trajectory. So here's uh, an instance of a, you know, uh, a thing in the compactification is a union over possible breaks. So there's a flow line from. Yeah, sorry. That's equal to M check. Yes, thanks. Yeah, so this is, this is, so M check bar is a compactification of it, and this is what it looks like. It, it counts trajectories. So here's A, here's, there's just C1 in this case, and B. Um, so you compactify by adding, uh, there's two C1s in this situation. Um, yeah, so that, that's the picture. And uh, just to give you a hint about how the compactification is proved, that's proved in the in some detail in the preamble to the notes. But um, if you take a, a flow line and look at its the where, look at the pointwise norm of the uh, gradient along the flow line. So that's what this 
picture is meant to represent. Well, <coughs> um, we know that the integral of that is finite because it's, it's, if it's a flow line between a pair of critical points, the integral of, of this is finite. So it's going to break up into pieces where um, you know, there will be finally many pieces where it's big, and then most of the time it's small. Now, <coughs> where it's small, um, one important thing, if you're on a finite dimensional manifold, it's e easy, easy to check, and you need as a hypothesis in general. If the gradient is small, then that tells you that you're, th that need, needs to tell you that you're near a critical point. Now, you can prove, as is done in the notes, that if you, so here the energy is small, so pick some point. You must be near a critical point in somewhere in here because the, you know, the change in, in the function is small here, so the integral of this quantity is small over an interval of some fixed length. So there must be some point in the interval where the, the, the gradient itself is small. So at somewhere it's close to a, uh, close to a critical point. And then uh, you can check that if you're close to a critical point, then in fact um, you stay close to that critical point unless the energy changes a certain amount. Again, that's done in the notes. So um, <coughs> what you find I eventually is that if you have a sequence of trajectories, you can cut up the sequence up to translation into bits where um, things are hanging around near critical points and then uh, there's some, mom some finite length intervals where you're moving between neighborhoods of the critical points. And that eventually leads to this compactification. Okay, so that's, that's a finite dimensional Morse theory. And <coughs> now we want to see, um, so we want to do Morse theory for the chern simons function. We saw, um, we saw that the, the uh, gradient uh, with some set of conventions, the gradient of chern simons uh, sorry, well, we saw the differential of chern simons um, Actually, let me say that, yeah. We saw the differential at a connection on, of chern simons was this integral, right? <coughs> so we want to take, we want to, Uh, yeah. So here's this affine space of connections in P, and uh, we choose, choose a Riemannian metric uh, on, on Y, then uh, <coughs> um, the tangent space at a connection, uh, right, the space of connection is an affine space for one form, so it's tangent space is the vector space for which is an affine space, one forms with values in, in the Lie algebra. Um, and so we can define, given a metric on Y, we can define an inner product uh, by taking, the, using the Hodge star uh, and the inner product on the Lie algebra to give us uh, a, a, an inner product. And then with respect to this, the gradient of chern simons is the Hodge star of the curvature. So the downward gradient flow equation says this. Right? <coughs> and we want to make a, a, <coughs> a key observation about that. Um, Namely, let's look at uh, four manifold, which is the cylinder times y, with the product metric. Um, <coughs> then, um, yeah, well, um, let me just sort of. Product metric. So this is a four manifold. Um, <coughs> so I think you saw in the first week, uh, you know, the, if you look at the Hodge star on the four manifold, uh, its square is one on two forms. 
And so you can, uh, there's an interesting equation. Um, what is, sorry. Yeah, sorry. I want to call this connection B. Sorry about that, if you're taking notes. Now, <coughs> um, this connection B, a solution to this equation is a, is a one-parameter family of connections on a three-manifold. I can view that as defining a connection on the four-manifold. So view BT as giving us uh, a connection uh, A on R times Y. And the, the key observation is that can't use that this equation dagger uh, dagger is equivalent to uh, to a being anti self dual i e that the Hodge star of F A, that's a four dimensional connection. So star squared is one. So there's two eigenspaces. And um, sorry, that's equal to minus F A. <coughs> now, there are two, um, two important miracles that ha happened, which don't have an analog in the finite dimensional Morse theory setting. <laughs> Um, so the first of these is that uh, this equation has a bigger symmetry group than this equation. So this equation gives us a, a one-parameter family of connections on, um, on R times Y. Not every connection is, as, a, as given, a one-parameter family. You can always do a gauge transformation so that they are, but um, this equation is symmetric under gauge transformation. Solutions to this equation are preserved under gauge transformations on this four manifold, whereas solutions to this equation are only preserved by gauge transformations on the three manifold. So that, that's the first miracle. The second miracle is that, well, this equation, it makes sense on any four manifold, not just on a cylinder. So this makes, so symmetry group is 4D gauge transformations. And makes sense uh, on any 4D manifold. There we go. Lovely. OK. Now, <coughs> I want to explain that, that um, these identities have a, a complete analog in that situation. <coughs> so, let's see. Um, okay, so let's define uh, the energy of a connection. to be the L2 norm of the curvature, which is written this way in this situation. Um, so an observation here, so Hodge star is, is conformally invariant in dimension four on, on two forms. So that implies the energy is in conformally invariant. So that's another, another miracle. And um, the analog of the equation that I just erased is that the integral, one half the integral of the trace of FA wedge FA. So if, it's a this is a closed four manifold. This is a Chern Bay form. 
um, this is equal to um, yeah. Okay, so what happens is this quantity, um, which you should compare to f of gamma of t0 minus f of gamma of t1, and we'll see in a minute why that's true, this quantity is equal to the energy uh, minus the, uh, sorry, that's plus the L2 norm of f plus squared. So again, um, you, just as before, if you have a solution to the anti-self-dual equation, f plus is 0, then um, the, this topological quantity controls the energy. Right? So as a, as a corollary, let's take two, two corollaries. Sorry, this, this is just the analogy from the finite dimensional case that this quantity, which we'll see in a minute um, why that's analogous, is, is equal to this. So th you know, th this is the quantity that compares to the, the drop in the energy, I mean, the drop in the function, which you're supposed to think of as the Chern-Simons function. This is the energy, and this is the norm of the equation that we're interested in. So there's a very precise analogy here. And um, yeah. so, so the first corollary, if x is closed, <coughs> so that makes sense. It doesn't have to be a cylinder. It can just be a closed four manifold. Then, um, then what we have is that. Uh, And A is ASD, so a connection in a principal bundle, say principal SU2 bundle P um, is ASD, if and only if its energy is equal to 4 pi squared C2 of P evaluated on the fundamental class of X. So, <coughs> um, and if it's not ASD, um, it's greater. Right? So the, there's a, a, a topological lower bound for the Yang Mills functional in dimension four. Um, and yeah, that's wonderful. Um, and yeah, in, in particular, um, <coughs> if the second Chern class is negative, this evaluation is negative, there's simply no. ASD connections. Right. Um, corollary two is that um, if X is a manifold with boundary, an empty boundary, then um, A is ASD if and only if um, you know, the Chern-Simons uh, of the connection is equal to the energy. Maybe there's a half in here. But um, so this, this guy, remember, if we, if we were on a cylinder, uh, this quantity just measures the, ch is equal by definition, essentially, to the difference in the churn, value of the Chern-Simons at the two ends. but um, more generally, it's just giving you a definition of the Chern-Simons when you have a manifold with boundary. Right? So I in particular, this, the, the Chern-Simons integral, um, Chern-Simons function, uh, doesn't this doesn't depend on the extension 
of the connection to the four manifold except uh, up to a, 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 uh, you know, up to four pi squared times an integer. So again, there's a characterization. Um, you know, so let me say, now, this is the, the formula that's exactly analogous to the story in Morse theory when you're on a cylinder. Okay, so lovely. Um, that's, that's where we get started. Now, of course, Morse theory is not so simple. I mean, setting it up is not so simple. And the reason is because there are, I mean, um, there, there are many ways to see that, that, that there's going to be some kind of problems, one of which is that there are already um, interesting solutions on, on the force sphere. So I want to give you um, an example of an interesting solution. It's called the basic instanton, and it's uh, due to Belavin, Polyakov, Schwartz, and Tupkin, something like 1975 or so. Um, they found an interesting solution to the ASD equation. There are many different descriptions of it. Um, one nice description is to think of, um, so lo look inside the quaternions at the, uh, sorry, the, um, two by two quaternion, uh, sorry, uh, H2, look at the unit sphere. Um, then uh, let um, SU2, which again is SP1, the three sphere inside the quaternions, uh, we're going to let that act by um, going to make a right action, sorry, this guy, okay? So this, um, here's my eraser. <coughs> Um, if I take the quotient, that's HP1, that's the force sphere. Um, so we have this, there's S7, so one, of the, one of the beautiful hop vibrations. Um, S, you know, so S7 is an S3 bundle over S4. Um, and uh, there's, a, there's a natural connection in this story, uh, namely if I, I take some point and look at the orbit, um, so here's the orbit uh, of some, let's say, V times SP1. Um, I make a connection by using the Riemannian metric, standard round metric, to the, define the horizontal space for the connection to be the orthogonal complement. So it's the orthogonal complement to the vertical tangent space. That's projection pi. Um, and uh, <laughs> it turns out that this is a, an anti-self-dual connection. Um, and uh, let me, <coughs> um, let me quickly sketch why that's true. So you can, I mean, again, there are many different proofs. You can do it by hand. That's on the homework. But you can also do it because, because this connection is very symmetric. 
you notice that um, SP2, so uh, so SP2 acts on S7, preserving uh, A. So SP2 is the uh, isometries of H2, which we are thinking of as you know, here we're acting. Um, this is, remember, quaternions aren't commutative. So we're acting on the right to define the principal bundle. And uh, there's a left action of two by two quaternion matrices on this. And we look at those quaternion matrices, which are also isometries. That's the group SB2 um, <coughs> that acts. And um, what do I want to say about that? Um, so then look at, so that acts, it preserves the connection. Uh, oh, yeah, and by the way, what the curvature of the connection, that's a two form with values in add p, which when we can identify, so we can identify two forms on the base with values in add p. Those are two forms on the total space of the bundle with values in the vertical space. That's the, um, so thinking of the connection, so, sorry, thinking of the curvature of a connection as a, a two form on the total space of the bundle, which transforms when I do the right action by the uh, adjoint action. Um, <coughs> well, that's what it is. So it's a section of this guy. Um, and uh, now let's consider the stabilizer of um, let's take uh, now v not to the be the point just one zero in H two um, v not brackets that's its equivalence class in S four and look at the stabilizer of v not. That's just um, um, that's just the diagonal matrices you can check easily. Diagonal matrices where they're each just unit quaternions. Um, now the uh, the connection is preserved by this sp2 action. And so um, we can, so its curvature is an sp2 equivariant two form on the total space. And um, what you can check um, is that, uh, let's see. Maybe. Is the principal SP1 bundle? Yeah, P, this is, so P is S7. S7. Yeah. S7. Yeah. Um, OK, so, um, yeah. I mean, let, let me just, so th this, once you think about this, it's just an exercise. And let me tell you what the exercise is. So think of this. Um, at the point, um, at the point v naught, that's a, <coughs> a map from lambda two of the four sphere to the Lie algebra, little s p one. Now this splits as a direct sum of, so this is this is lambda two of the four sphere, split splits as, sorry the eigenspaces of the Hodge star. Um, this is an equivariant map. So it has to, you know, and both of the, this, these three representations are each irreducible representations of SP2. And what you check um, 
um, what you check is that um, that you know that sp2 action is trivial here. Uh, sorry, it's trivial here, non-trivial here, and um, sorry, I'm not saying it. Saying this right. Me. <coughs> um, so, yeah, sorry. Yeah. The thing I should say is the thing that preserves V naught is just this subgroup, where you have one here and Q one here, and you can check that that um, that subgroup acts. Um, this guy's anti self dual. It uh, acts um, trivially on both of these guys, non-trivially here. So the only option for the curvature is that it, it's a map from here to here. So I mean, just check by symmetry. Um, anyway, so you, you can check it many other ways. Um, Anyway, so th there is an interesting solution. There's very s nice symmetric connection on the seven sphere. Um, and we, we can generate other solutions from it. So th we, we noted that the ASD equation is conformally invariant. So we can act on A by the conformal group of S4, SO51. Um, now, um, A is actually, well, strictly speaking, if we're acting on A, it's uh, acted on by spin 5, 1, but never mind that. Um, A, is, um, A is fixed by um, the original one, by sp2, which is spin 5. So we get get an SO51 mod SO5 family of connections. And that you can think of as hyperbolic five space. So there's a five the ball. So from this one connection, we've already constructed a five parameter family of, of different solutions to the ASD equation. 